Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Zadigan. And I'm Ari Zadigan and we are here with... Chris Glessel. From Ricardo's Restaurant. Thank you for spending the time with us. Um, tell us a little bit about your restaurant. Well, Ricardo's Toronto uh, is now three years and a few months old. And we are a modern Mediterranean restaurant located at the corner of Richmond and Peter. We have about 8,000 square feet of restaurant space and 11,000 square feet of event space that we operate together with uh, our landlords allied here. Um, we offer breakfast, lunch, dinner, any meal period in between where you get hungry. We have a cafe and bakery for grab and go business, um, coffees, pastries. Uh, all of our food is made in house. So we make our own soups, our own stocks, our sauces, all of our pastries. And I would define our food as mostly inspired by Italian, French, Spanish, but also many of the other 23 Mediterranean countries. So you'll have some North African, Middle Eastern inspired foods, some Greek inspired foods, really everything that surrounds the Mediterranean Sea. So there's seafood a lot, all of the natural flavors, um, grilled, sautéed, a lot less fried than you typically find in Toronto. So I'd almost like to say we're, we're a healthier choice to most people. That's Very wonderful. Nice. What are one of your specialty dishes here? We make fantastic risottos. Uh, we made fantastic pasta dishes as well. But one of our uh, guest favorites is, for example, the lamb burger as well. We have a fantastic quinoa burger. Our desserts are just out of this world. Our pastry chef, Mark Cheese, has the most amazing creations. Um, with every spoon, with every fork, with every bite, there's a new flavor explosion in, in your mouth. So it's really also a venue where you should taste desserts, right, and, and explore in that direction. And then, of course, one thing that I can't forget to mention is that we have an awesome Sunday jazz brunch. Um, this neighborhood used to be a little bit slower on weekends. So I guess the residents spend long nights out and celebrate, but then during the day you'd hardly see much foot traffic. And since we've started our Sunday Jazz Brunch early 2017, uh, we've seen that change. So by now we cater to about 300 guests every Sunday from 10 a.m. until about 3 p.m. with a live jazz band in the restaurant that people can enjoy. It's an all-you-can-eat concept where you approach the live stations, chef make pasta fresh, for you uh, to order. We have foie gras, we have oysters, we have antipasti, uh, we have roasts from all areas of the Mediterranean. Um, of course, a, a great Benny's Corner as well. So we've really created a time on a Sunday morning where it's worthwhile for you to skip breakfast, for some people even the dinner the night before, oh, yes. and then just <laughs> indulge for two hours over here with your family. And, and I guess what um, would be most attractive to families living in the entertainment district is that every Sunday we have a bouncy castle, we have a wooden toy train, we have coloring books, and our staff take care of the kids. So if parents finally want to have a date with each other, they arrive here, feed the kids, and then after 15 minutes, let them go and play, and finally mother and father or the partners can finally have a conversation That's and time wonderful. together. That's wonderful. You're going to have tons of people just for that. Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're here. Come and visit us. Yeah. So tell me about the history of the building. The building is a heritage building originally, five floors and it's more than 120 years old. Um, around 1912, for example, this building housed a bakery that would produce all of the cookies for the Canadian Armed Forces. Later on, it became a printing press. There were nightclubs in here at the time when Peter Street was very much the clubbing district. Um, and then a few years ago, the developer and the architect decided this heritage building must shine as it is, but we will frame it with a modern building to represent the past and the present and maybe even the future of Toronto, right? So now there's 17 floors in total, 12 floors of commercial and office space, and our level here, the ground floor, is where we have the only canopy restaurant in the building, plus the event space outside. So very tradition-rich, and a perfect reflect reflection of Toronto's history and the amalgamation of so many different cultures and so on. I love that event space you have outside. Yeah, I already unique. dream about the events that we could host there. It's so unique because it has a 70 foot high ceiling. Um, a capacity can reach up to 1200 guests for a standing reception. And we have done fantastic parties for all segments, corporate, social, charity, and it's really become the hot venue in Toronto right now. So tell me, what kind of events do you guys run? 
We run smaller group events in our restaurant, buyouts as well. We have a lot of weekend brunch weddings, for example. We've created our own events though as well. So on top of the external events that come and inquire uh, with us that we cater to, we, for example, created an annual event to start the festive season. This year, it'll be the third year running that Atrium Lights takes place. It'll be on the 3rd of December this year. And that's an afternoon event, end of day event, where we encourage people to unwind from the hustle and bustle, come into our atrium and be our guests. It's a free event. Um, the event starts at five o'clock. Arrival, people can pick and choose from a few Christmas favorite cookies and beverages and so. And then when the lights go down and no decoration is there, you'll see handbell ringers marching in. You'll have a choir of 50 singers awesome. singing uh, Christmas carols. And then after a big light show that triggers all the decoration in the atrium, our team passes out um, cookies and gingerbreads and hot chocolate and mulled wine and all of the traditional Christmas favorites and festive favorites, I guess, uh, that are not so tied to commercial reasons. We just like to do it to bring the community together. That's wonderful. So that's one thing early December. And then we have created, based on our successful Sunday Jazz Brunch, uh, a super brunch as well, which doesn't happen regularly, right? But this year it's planned for the 1st of January. So imagine any elaborate brunch with the type of dishes that I said to you earlier, but added entertainment of musical nature, maybe theatrical and so on. There's a lot of surprises, so I don't want to reveal a lot. But it essentially spreads across all of the almost 20,000 square feet that we have, including the atrium. Does it need booking? It does definitely need booking. Where all of our they? bookings uh, will go through ricardas.com. That's R-I-C-A-R-D-A-S.com. There's a booking link to it. There's a telephone number as well. And our staff will be happy to help. Awesome. That's great. Uh, tell That's us more great. about the neighborhood. How have you seen the neighborhood evolve since you've been here? So over the last few years, I've seen that the neighborhood is very much on the go. Um, it used to be a little bit sleepy, alternative. I've seen a lot of influx of startups, tech companies, um, a lot of freelance work happening over here, younger crowd moving in, not only the clubbing crowd of, I guess, the last 10 or 15 years, but people who are really the new go-getters. Right? And we see them, because we have such a variety of, of opening hours, right? We see them coming in at any time of the day. But we also see a lot of guests coming over from the financial district even, crossing over university and John to come over here to have breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, and so on. Um, so there is definitely more attention given to this part of town. Yes. And of course now with TIFF going on, right, everywhere yeah. there are crowds, oh, yeah. there's a lot of curiosity, there's a lot of visitors from out of town, um, not only regional but yes. obviously international as well. That's right. And um, yeah, I'm glad when they find their way into Ricardas because I really want to say our, our team has um, been blessed with achieving a lot of international hospitality standards. Mm -hmm. We've been told by our guests that they feel the sincerity and the authenticity of our hospitality. Yeah, yeah. So that sets us apart. And I think we're, with that, really managing to add something to the community. Because a location like this, where I almost want to say, where everybody knows your name once you've been here once, right? That doesn't exist in the entertainment district very often. That's true. So during the TIFF period, uh, do people need to have booking to come here or? It's always better to have a booking because we do get full very fast during the main meal periods. Of course, we always are happy about walk-in guests and we've never turned away a customer. We always find a place for, for them to dine or to drink, right? And for us to entertain them. But it is recommendable to make a reservation, especially on weekends. Yes. Uh, the brunches do get very full very fast. So three weeks in advance is typically when, when people should book if they want to have the table that they desire. Right? Very nice, very nice. And you've got several locations from yes. what I understand. Well, this is our flagship uh, location here and it's three years old. We have another location in downtown Oakville, right on the corner of Lakeshore and Reynolds. It's also called Ricardo's, just Ricardo's Oakville. Okay. It has a beautiful outdoor patio that seats about 60 guests and indoors about 90 guests. A similar style of cuisine, so it's the modern Mediterranean interpretation as well. But slight differences to the menu based on the crowd being slightly different in Oakville. Uh, we have a private, private dining room there as well. So we host events and we're also open on weekends for breakfast, lunch and dinner. During the week from Tuesday to Friday we're open for lunch and for dinner. 
Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with here. Pleasure. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you thank again. You, so I guess that the way that I understand it's a place for young and hip as well as for families, Absolutely. which is hard to come by in yes. this neighborhood, which is great. Yeah. Thank you again for your time. Pleasure. Thank you, thank Chris. You. Thanks a lot.